Hi everyone, my name is Jenny and I'm back today to do another video. First off, I just want to apologize for the glare in my glasses. I get great natural light in from my room, but I think that also means that the glare, we will all just have to deal with it together. So I am here today to talk about my August wrap up. I was not planning on filming my August wrap up now. I was gonna combine it with September because as I've said many times on my channel, I'm now officially in grad school. I just finished my first week of classes, which is really exciting. And I was not planning on doing this video, but I ended up reading 10 books in August because I had several weeks where I was doing absolutely nothing. And as someone who makes videos on YouTube about books is wont to do, I read a lot during that time. So I figured I would capture all of my thoughts on those books now and not have to like worry about them in the future. So as I said, I read 10 books. I'm not gonna do my like usual stats that I often do at the beginning of these videos, just because I didn't have the time or the motivation to pull up all of that stuff together. This is also gonna be relatively casual. A lot of these books I read relatively quickly and was kind of preoccupied with other things on my mind. And so I don't have a ton of like really deep, meaningful things to say, but I did wanna just kind of share my overall thoughts on all of these books. So starting with the first book that I've read in the month and moving to my most recent read just because again I didn't have the motivation to put them in the order in terms of like star ranking but the first book I finished during the month was Damnation Spring by Ash Davidson which I gave four stars to. I actually talked about this one quite a bit in my August reading vlog which I'll put a link to up in the cards above but I enjoyed this one. I as I said give it four stars. It's a historical fiction novel that follows a family over the course of a year in the 1970s in a small logging town in California. The husband slash like father of the family is involved in a logging company that works in the redwood forest around their community and the wife is kind of getting involved over the course of this year that this novel tracks. It's some political activism related to environmental protection surrounding the kind of protection of the redwoods because of some like health reasons. So there's some really interesting discussion here about like personal versus political and also kind of differing ideologies within a family. There's a lot of discussion about how a family's livelihood is potentially negatively impacting them, which I really enjoyed at times, especially towards the end. This novel got a little like melodramatic to the point that I was not super pleased with it. And so that's in part why I didn't rate it as highly. I also thought at times it was a bit slow. It's almost close to 500 pages and I don't think it needed to be that long, but I overall did enjoy it. And I think the kind of themes here are interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing whatever Ash Davidson does next. And I do have my book of the month copy here, but, but this was also sent to me by Scribner uh, through NetGalley. So thank you to Scribner for providing me with an early copy of this one. And this one is available now and it's also a book of the month book, obviously. Then the next book I finished was The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. This one actually comes out on the 7th of September from Atria Books. So it will be coming out shortly after this video comes out. And I enjoyed this one quite a bit as well. And this is a romance novel that follows two men who are both involved in a kind of bachelor type show called Ever After. One of our like main characters is the leading person on this show. And so he's kind of destined to find love with one of the 24 women that are on the show. And then the other guy is a producer for the show. And so he ends up being his um, like showrunner or kind of personal assistant to the main guy who's on the show. And the two of them kind of have a like practice dating relationship that obviously turns into real love. I thought there were parts of this romance novel that were really funny, which I always appreciate in like romance novels. I also thought there were definitely heavy themes here and it kind of touched an emotional depth that I also often appreciate in romance novels. This one touches a lot on ideas of mental health and not recognizing when you are kind of deeply struggling with mental health, but it also touched pretty extensively on discovering your identity and coming to terms with your sexuality and how that may be different than what you expected purely just because your life has not allowed for the opportunity for you to question your sexuality to come up. I thought their dynamic was pretty good. They weren't like my favorite romance couple that I've ever read from, but I did enjoy it. I also have seen some critiques about the like diversity rep here as one of the main characters is Indian American, but it didn't feel like he was super Indian American, particularly given that he kind of brushes off a lot of Indian culture by being like a second generation or even maybe third generation Indian American. And I know some own voices reviewers were kind of pushing back on that a little bit. So do kind of look into that if that's something that 
you like to kind of be aware of when reading books but I definitely enjoyed it and it definitely kind of filled the niche of what I look for in romance novels so yeah I gave it four stars I would recommend it then the next book I finished I finished while I was moving and I also talked a bit about in that reading vlog that I mentioned previously which was Celestial Bodies by Joka L. Harthy so this one I read for the reading woman prompt of reading an Arab author in translation and unfortunately this didn't entirely work very well for me so this follows three generations of Omani women beginning in I believe the 1970s and moving to a more present day although that was one thing I didn't love about the novel was that I didn't ever really know what time period we were in even in any given chapter but we also more frequently follow one of the like daughters so there's a matriarch and then three of her children then we follow some of their children as well but one of the daughters husband is like a primary voice in this novel his narrative is like every other chapter and then literally every other character is thrown into the every other chapter and I didn't particularly find his story compelling whatsoever I didn't think that he should have been like the kind of main body of this novel i thought that the women particularly even his wife and his daughter and then his wife's sisters were like much more interesting and there were definitely like plot lines that i was more intrigued about that we didn't hear from nearly as much as we heard from his plot line that primarily focuses on losing his father and kind of reflections on his childhood but i just didn't engage with that story whatsoever so i only gave this three stars i think if you were planning on reading it for the reading women challenge maybe continue to read it. It was relatively short and I listened to the audiobook which I would recommend. I would say it wasn't like the best audiobook I've ever read. The next book I finished was A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. I thought this one would just be like a fun one to kind of read and not have to think too deeply about and also this book is very popular alongside his other book Cruel Facility as an audiobook from the library and I place hold on both of those books periodically because I have them on my shelves and I want to get to both of them at some point so I placed a hold on this audiobook it just happened to come in and I was like no seems like a good time to read it so I did read this and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it it was definitely the like light-hearted but very touching book that I think I needed in that week before I started grad school so this primarily follows man whose name is Count Alexander Rostov who is part of the kind of old guard of Russia. He was a member of the nobility there prior to the revolution in 1918 but he's not very high up in the nobility. I mean he was just a count and not a count of a particularly notable place and so for whatever reason regardless of whether this was like accurate to history or not he is allowed to continue to live and not be killed by the revolutionaries but he is required to live his life under house arrest in this hotel in Moscow. So this story basically tracks his life living in the hotel and the people he comes across and the relationships he makes therein and the relationships here are just so touching and I think also Amor Tolls has a way of capturing kind of nuances of the human experience particularly as it relates to nostalgia and thinking about the times that have passed and you know will never come back in really really beautiful ways that I just was constantly struck by. This also definitely has a lot of brevity to it which I think is really nice uh, despite its length. It definitely feels like a read that you are not like slogging through by any means. I also found the characters in general to just be really delightful. I have seen some reviewers talk about like how many of the characters don't seem flawed whatsoever. They're all just kind of like perfect characters which I agree with but I think that also like added to the charm of the book. So I really enjoyed that aspect of them all being like great people obviously some of them had kind of complexities in their lives but overall we're just like really enjoyable characters that I enjoyed spending time with. I would highly recommend this if it's been sitting on your shelves for forever like it has for mine. I found it to be a grand old very sweet and heartwarming time. Then for a book that was even more gut-wrenching than parts of Gentlemen in Moscow I read The Heart Principle by Helen Huang which is Huang's third novel in this series. I'm not sure what the series is called but it begins with The Kish Quotient which is one of my favorite romance novels and this romance novel is by far her best. I think this book is phenomenal. I gave it five stars and absolutely loved it. This follows a character by the name of Anna who is a professional violin player and she after kind of experiencing kind of mental break particularly in her musical abilities she feels unable to kind of complete any musical pieces after she has this kind of breakthrough moment with a viral YouTube video and so she has begun going to therapy in this time that she's kind of taking a break from her professional violin career and I'm around that same time that she's really kind of digging into things in therapy. Her boyfriend at the time who sucks suggests that they open their relationship prior to him kind of committing fully committing to her and the two of them getting married and so our book opens with Anna kind of being 
forced into an open relationship that she doesn't want and deciding that to kind of get back at her boyfriend and to just see what else is out there. She goes for a one night stand with a character named Quan who does make an appearance in the previous two books. I don't remember him at all but apparently he's well beloved by like other readers of this series but Quan and Anna kind of have a few attempts at a one night stand but none of them really come to fruition for a variety of reasons on both of their parts but also about a third of the way through the book we also learn that Anna's father has gotten very sick and so the book then takes a turn into just a very intense and emotionally devastating discussion about caregiving particularly caregiving to a parent and particularly the guilt associated with caregiving to a parent who you believe to no longer want to receive that care and so this book definitely touches on that very deeply that's also a topic that's very personal to Helen Hang as she experienced a very similar thing there's also a lot of discussion here about sibling dynamics that come with the loss of a parent or that kind of end of life stage so do be very cognizant of all of that if that's something that is kind of emotionally challenging or difficult for you to read about as that is definitely like not shied away from at all in this novel uh, I just thought that all was so well done and just like absolutely emotionally gut-wrenching but I also do wish that their love story like Quan and Anna's had been a bit more about the kind of emotional support that Quan was able to give to her during that time as their kind of romantic parts of the story during that like second half where Anna's caregiving to her father definitely they felt a little misplaced at times which I didn't love. Helen Wang's known for kind of having a very sexy approach to like traditionally published romance novels and so sometimes there'd be this like very sexy scene between Anna and Quan like almost immediately after Anna had like a big spat with her sister or with her mom or something and so at times that just like didn't feel quite right and I wish that the kind of more emotional side of their relationship had been explored more deeply in those sections but it didn't bother me enough to not give this five stars and I do highly recommend this if you think that the subject matter is something that you would be able to handle as I was just so beautiful cried many many tears would highly recommend the next book that I finished in the month of August was also a Reading Woman prompt book that I did not enjoy very much, which was Elsewhere Home by Leila Abuela. This is a short story collection by Abuela, who's one of the like bonus prompt authors for the Reading Woman Challenge. And I didn't love these stories. I think that for me, short stories need to have some sort of emotional depth. I also love short fiction for its ability to like capture a very itinerant moment in time and the kind of temporality of short stories is something I really love and these stories while they did feel like a very temporary moment in time did not have the kind of like significance imbued in that moment that I look for in short fiction and that I think is what makes short fiction shine. So the kind of crux of this collection is primarily about people that are elsewhere but thinking of home as the title might suggest so it's a lot of stories about people who have immigrated from primarily Sudan as that is where Abuela is also from but also a few people from Egypt or other parts of the kind of Middle East that are either living in a different part of the Middle East or primarily just in the UK but there might be one story that takes place in Europe I don't entirely remember but most of the stories are focused on these narratives of immigration and thinking about home and like homemaking in a place that is foreign to you and I think the stories that worked best for me were the stories that really delved deep into that topic particularly when reflecting on a person who has made a home elsewhere outside of their country of origin and has even kind of built a life there potentially with someone who is not one Muslim or two like from their own country and kind of the difficulties there and the lack of kind of fully understanding one another so those are probably my favorite stories but overall it was just like a fine collection I don't really remember any of the stories super well I'm not entirely sure I would recommend it then another book that was like just okay for me was The Removed by Brandon Hobson this one I listened to the audio of as well I was very big into the audiobooks particularly like listening to the audiobook and reading along I found to be really nice this past month and so a lot of these I consumed both like reading the book but also listening to audio and this book was no exception to that so this is a contemporary fiction novel I guess about a family looking back kind of on their son slash brother's death um, that happened about 15 years prior to most of when this novel takes place and so we're kind of following three of the main family members Ray Ray's who is the child that was killed 
when he was 16 years old mom and then his sister and his younger brother i believe his sister is an older sister but honestly that was never entirely made clear to me but we are following these three characters as they kind of prepare for the 15th celebration of Ray Ray's death together and also kind of look into the ways that they are responding to that grief and kind of moving on from that grief in both healthy and unhealthy ways. This book also touches a lot on Ray Ray's father whose name I don't remember but he has Alzheimer's and so the sections particularly with Ray Ray's mom touch a lot on his Alzheimer's and kind of dealing with that diagnosis and kind of what that means for their family at large. There is also a thread in also Ray Ray's mom's section about a foster son who joins their family for just a couple of days and the kind of impact that that foster son has on the father with Alzheimer's and Ray Ray's mom. And there's also just kind of some other explorations of like Cherokee mythology. Brandon Hobson, I don't think I mentioned this, is a member of the Cherokee, the Oklahoma band of the Cherokee Nation. And the characters in this book are also members of the Oklahoma band of the Cherokee Nation. And so there's a lot of discussion about Cherokee mythology and particularly the Trail of Tears and mythologizing around the Trail of Tears is something that's also very prominent in this book, which I found really interesting at times. I wish that I had a better grasp of what Cherokee mythology is, you know, the kind of primary themes of Cherokee mythology, as I think this novel would have been made even more meaningful for me if that had been the case. But I did still enjoy it for the most part. I mean, it was a pretty quick read. Again, not super memorable, but while I was reading it, I was having a pretty good time. So yeah, I give this one three stars as well. Would recommend it if the subject matter seems interesting to you. Then the next book I read also on audio and I read this over the course of like a single day. I just was going to start it and then kind of move on with my life but I ended up just like listening to it throughout that day. It is a novella so like was not too much of a feat but I was still really kind of impressed which was Riot Baby by Toji Onibuchi. This is a novella as I said that is a, like speculative contemporary situation that is really exploring themes of the black experience policing in america and also the intersection of policing in america and democratic systems with technology as this takes a very kind of technology focused idea of what like policing and the incarceration system in america could look like with the kind of path of technology that we're on which i thought was super fascinating i do think this novella and this is true of a lot of novellas like there was not enough space to fully expand upon those themes but as a thematic exercise and thinking about those ideas and thinking about the kind of nefarious nature of technology i found super uh fascinating and definitely would be like interested in kind of even reading some like nonfiction critical essays from on Yubuchi, as i think that he obviously is someone who thinks a lot in, in very interesting ways about these topics. I will say the novella in terms of like a plot was a bit confusing. There were elements of like a kind of telekinesis power that one of the two siblings that we primarily follow in this novel has that was not really explained very well. And there was also a lot of time jumps because of it, which was also kind of confusing. But the other sibling who is in prison in the incarceration system and deals with a lot of this kind of increase in technology and the use of technology particularly like surveillance technology in the prison system that plot line i thought was a lot more interesting obviously because those are the themes that i like was more intrigued about so yeah i would recommend it i gave it four stars i thought it was a really solid novella i definitely want to read more of on work so then the last physical book that i have finished so far this month it is the 28th but i'm not gonna finish anything more during this month and the second to last book that I finished in the month was What I Know Now, Letters to My Younger Self, which is edited by Ellen Spragans. This was actually a gift that was sent to me a long time ago, and I feel bad that it has sat on my shelves for so long, but I felt since I was like about to start a new adventure that like Letters to My Younger Self might be a good thing to read. And these are primarily just short biographies of different famous people. Like for example, here's Olympia Dukakis, and so we get a like mini biography of the person and kind of why they were chosen for this collection. And then a short, like less than a page letter that they have written to a younger self of theirs at some kind of critical junction in their life. And unfortunately this was published in 2004 and it very much feels like a product of its time, particularly given how like rooted it is in like Bush era conservatism and also like neoliberalism and first wave feminism, like a lot of, 
things that in 2021 just were somewhat questionable to read that I didn't love a lot of the letters. I also found that many of them kind of were giving advice to their younger self that they obviously didn't end up taking, which I thought was an odd choice given that all of these people are like very successful and yet they're telling their younger self to like do something differently or like a regret of theirs which I guess makes sense like obviously people have regrets in their life but I would think a letter to your younger self is gonna be more inspirational and like look at where you are now and like look how this choice even if it was a bad choice like actually benefited you greatly I feel like that would have been a better way to frame all of these letters so I don't really like this I gave it 2.5 stars I will say my friend that gave this to me wrote like some notes in it and that was by far my favorite part was like seeing what she really connected with and there were some of the letters that were really heartfelt and meaningful but overall I did not really like this gave it 2.5 stars would not recommend it. then the final book I finished this month was The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delila Harris this one is a thriller that came out over the summer it was getting a lot of buzz and then I think a lot of people didn't like it as much as they were expecting to because I haven't really heard that many people talk about it but I was intrigued about it and it also was a like skip the line loan on my Libby app so I just got the ebook and decided to read it and this is a like thriller that is kind of speculative in some aspects that's following a young woman by the name of Nella who is a black woman and she's the only black woman working in her publishing house and while she has like attempted to kind of have some kind of diversity meetings and talk about the lack of diversity in her publishing house and in publishing more broadly those have not been very well received in the past like couple years but then a new black woman enters the publishing house and kind of begins to change things and people begin to appreciate her insights more and kind of receive those insights better than they were Nella's insights about diversity and the lack thereof and then kind of weirder and weirder things start happening and the story kind of takes off from there and eventually goes in kind of a speculative direction and there were parts of this that I enjoyed I think the discussion surrounding like diversity in publishing was really good I also liked the kind of discussion around like competition in the workplace and the way that that can kind of make you do things you regret but I also thought that the crux of the, like the thriller or the mystery or like what the novel was trying to say was kind of lost on me after kind of finishing the book I did read some like reviews and a lot of reviews said that this was a satire which I don't get along very well with satire so maybe that's why it was missed on me but I just was not entirely sure what I was supposed to take from the ending conclusion I also foresaw the ending conclusion like about halfway through the book like I could tell what was going on and so I was kind of disappointed by what ended up happening and I didn't feel super satisfied by it so I gave this 3.5 stars because I think some of the thematic discussion is good but the actual like plotting and the kind of end message were really muddled for me so I didn't super love it so those are the 10 books that I finished in the month of August I am currently reading the ones we left behind by Joan Ho which is a YA speculative thriller mystery that I am enjoying but it's also a little confusing so I might feel similarly to it as I did to the other black girl so I think that's everything for this video thank you so much for joining me in my new space I hope you enjoyed if you're new to my channel I'd love to have you stick around and subscribe I am hoping to start vlogging more regularly especially once I get settled more into classes and begin developing a routine so do look out for more frequent vlogs from me I hope you're having a great rest of your day whenever you watch this and I will talk to you next time